this makes sense in the U.S. or some other kind of... Uh... Our point of view, first of all, is that um, we need renewable energy, and we need renewable energy worldwide. And the reason for that is very simple. It's emissions and is uh, how to make sure that our world is more sustainable. And you see where emissions are coming from. Obviously, energy, power specifically, is a big source for that. And uh, the best way to reduce those emissions is either to use less power or to have more renewable uh, power. And within renewable, we think that solar is the future. As you have probably heard many times, with a small, tiny fraction of the solar energy we receive every day, we could power the world. And that's what we try to do. So solar energy is really taken off here in Spain. What have been some of the drivers of that and really helped get it launched like it is? What has really uh, driven our growth has been uh, the feed-in tariff concept. Um, around Europe, uh, most countries in renewable energy, uh, what they do is they approve what we call feed-in tariffs. This means that any power that is produced with a certain renewable energy technology, um, the developer knows that he will be paid either from utilities or from the government directly, depending on the country, a certain amount per kilowatt hour. Okay. Therefore, uh, so it sets a floor price? It says, uh, in floor. some cases, a floor, in some cases, a floor and a cap. So in some cases, it's okay. the price. Okay. Uh, what it does is it so manages... I mean, it's, it's a nice hedge, almost. It, it is. Yeah. So it manages the risk. Yeah. The risk in, in doing a, a solar plant anywhere is the technology, but that's our bread and butter, so we know how to manage that. But who will be the off-taker? Who's going to purchase this power going forward? Uh, many of these plants you cannot just go into the market and sell because uh, these are huge investments. There's no fuel cost here. Right. But instead of fuel cost, you have a higher investment cost. So you want to know that there will be an off-taker who will be paying you no matter what uh, for the kilowatt hours you produce. At this point in time, some sort of uh, support is needed. Uh, today, uh, power coming from solar is more expensive than conventional sources. Uh, over time, that uh, premium will decrease and will decrease because of two reasons. Number one, and we tend to overlook this one, is because we don't generate CO2 emissions. And in many cases, when you compare the cost of a kilowatt hour coming from solar versus uh, conventional fossil fuels, you forget that there's a significant amo amount of money there that has to be spent in dealing with the CO2 in conventional that we don't have. So if you take that into account, you start to close the gap. Second, uh, as the industry grows and we get into higher volumes and we improve our technologies and our efficiencies, we will see a similar process to what we saw in wind, which is wind started very high and over time costs have been decreasing and today are very close to fossil fuels in, in most geographies. Basically, there are two families. Uh, one is concentrating solar power which would be the troughs, the towers, and some other uh, technologies that use the heat coming from the sun. And then you have a family of products around photovoltaics, which are, is using the light coming from the sun. Differences, um, in the first case, you end up having a larger plants, utility scale, if you want, uh, where as you use the heat in order uh, to produce energy, you can actually store that heat. Mm. And the plants have what we call thermal inertia. So they don't go on and off the grid uh, with, when the solar resource uh, disappears. So we can provide utilities or grids uh, a more stable production. Mm. It has a disadvantage, nevertheless. CSP only works in areas, in geographies, where the solar radiation, the direct solar radiation, is high enough. In other words, where the heat from the sun is enough for that plant to run. In the case of photovoltaics, it has advantages. It can be done at a very small scale, like a rooftop, and it has disadvantages. You cannot store energy, and the production goes on and off uh, quicker. So you need to have very robust uh, networks to be able to, to deal with that. In towers, uh, what we do, as you, as you have seen, is we use a large field in this case uh, of what we call heliostats, very large mirrors that focus the sun 
on the upper part of the tower where we have a receiver. The temperature we can create in that area using the mirrors is extremely high. Actually, the challenge today is how to use more of that heat effectively. So you're really storing heat with concentrated solar, not electricity. Absolutely. And in our case, we work in two technologies to, to store the heat. Uh, and uh, what we can do is give our clients a completely different product from uh, photovoltaics or wind. So concentrating solar power is one of the very few renewable energies where we can tailor production to the needs and not to the natural resource. An example of where this is important is the southwest of the US, uh, where many utilities have a peak in the evening when people go home and start using the air conditioning in the summer. You have a huge peak that they need to manage. And that peak starts when the sun is still shining, but gets into the evening when the sun disappears. So it's very important to be able to continue producing solar power for a few hours into the evening. What are some of the early challenges that you've seen, just broadly? Uh, at this point in time, obviously many. Um, technology, uh, we believe, is the most important and how to make sure that we can uh, improve technologies, in some cases, technologies that are proven already, in some other cases, how to move from R&D to demonstration plants to commercial plants. And that is steps uh, require significant investments, both in terms of financial and resources. And our key challenge now is to how to move from the lab, where we have, in our case, 80 people doing research and development, how to move from there to commercial plants, like the ones you saw. One of the great challenges for any of the alternative energies is the ability to store electricity. Is your company investing in that? I mean, it has been obviously one of the challenges of the industry for, for decades. Uh, things uh, lately have been improving. There's significant R&D money uh, getting into that. Still today, uh, we are far away from having a competitive source of um, um, technologies to be able to store electricity, uh, at least at the scale we need it. Uh, here we are not talking about power in a car. We are talking about having 10 or 20 or 30 megawatts of, of storage. So still we are a bit far away from that. I think eventually we will be there. We will get to a point where at least in certain cases and certain places we will have a, an efficient way of storing electricity. The investment cost in CSP, according to experts, is similar to the cost of a nuclear plant. Yeah. For example, in the US, uh, DOE did a report recently where the numbers per megawatt were, were somehow similar. Okay. Still, obviously, the production is lower in our case because we don't operate every hour. Uh, we operate more hours than, for example, a wind or many wind uh, facilities because of the fact that we can store. That investment cost, we believe, has to decrease over time mm -hmm. and will decrease. We are in the infancy of this industry. I mean, you have seen the two only solar towers operating worldwide. And as I said before, there are a few uh, trough uh, plants. You cannot pretend that that's or, uh, an efficient industry. That Sahara project, which I read about on your website, it's an amazing idea, but it's almost like science fiction. Can something like that really be done? Uh, technically, it can be done. So solar plants in Northern Africa, the technology is there, they can run. They will produce more uh, energy per square meter or foot uh, uh, than in Europe, for example. Transmission, it can be done. There, there's the technology to be able to move the power from Northern Africa into Europe. The challenge is more on the regulation side, on the political side, on making sure how governments can collaborate among each other to be able to give grants that in principle apply only to European plants to a plant that is located in Northern Africa, how to move the electrons from Northern Africa through Southern Europe to Northern Europe. Right. Those are the kind of challenges we have in front of us. What has changed recently is that companies, very large companies, have decided to push this forward okay. as a business. Uh, obviously, as a business that has clear advantages uh, from a socio-economic point of view. Okay. From Northern Africa, you can help to create jobs, you can help to introduce new technologies, and you would generate power that would be also used locally at a lower cost, because you would be making some money by exporting that. 
Right. We believe it can happen. Now it won't happen overnight. Right. It will take a long time. If you look two to three decades in the future, what's your vision? What can we expect to see in solar? I think that um, we will continue seeing a number of technologies. I don't think there will be one technology that will, um, will take over in the foreseeable future. And we will go towards a utility scale type of product where we offer very large plants with storage uh, that utilities can manage and that utilities know. And that will be CSP. And um, we will see if it's towers, troughs, a combination, or depending on geographies. And then we have um, smaller plants, mid-size uh, plants, plus distributed, where PV, clearly photovoltaics, uh, have an advantage. I think that in, in 2030 or, or 2040, uh, renewable energy or renewable power in general should be more than 50% of, of portfolios, at least in developed countries. 50% of the electricity. Of the electricity should be coming from renewable sources. Some of the critics of renewables, but solar in particular, say it's not so much about political will, it's about thermodynamics, it's about energy density. It just takes too much area. What do you say to that? I say it's true. Um, <laughs> what I say is if we had a clean alternative, um, uh, let's say with more power per unit, uh, I would entertain that discussion. But show me something clean and renewable mm -hmm. that has that features.